Welcome to the debut edition, I guess, of something I'm calling KSO Today. Uh, assuming this all goes well and people find any value in it, this is going to be a, a brief, you know, Monday through Friday, one-man podcast we'll do every day here at Case It Online, at least through football and basketball season, Monday through Friday. Um, the intention of this is to talk a little bit about what's been going on most recently on the site, you know, of course, with K-State Sports, what to expect on the site, things we're talking about there. Uh, as this moves on, I hope to even pass a day on, you know, to Flando, one to Derek. They can each own it, do it their own way. Flando's day, of course, I guess you'd expect a lot of hoops talk. Derek's probably football recruiting, but they're pretty versatile guys. We'll see. Um, that might be down the road, though. Again, we'll see how this goes, see if you guys and gals enjoy it and, and find value in it. So if K-State's recently played a game, I think we'll spend some time, of course, talking about that particular contest. If there hasn't been a game recently, maybe we'll look around the league, talk recruiting, you know, look at K-State's next game, or just try to be remotely entertaining if I can. You know, like all of this shows, this is sponsored by both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Uh, PSB, I checked this out, does have 10, 10 branch locations throughout the state, uh, 17 ATMs, 6 in Manhattan. So if you're in a town like I am, they're all over the place, and they've been really, really good to us. So, you know, like any sponsor, of course, we're going to say they're great, but they really have been. I appreciate the way they've treated us, and if you're looking for any options, whether it's in banking, insurance, etc., cetera, um, they've been great to us. I'm sure they could be to you, too. So since we just got back from Austin, you know, I'm recording this Monday morning around 10.30, I got back from Austin about 8 o'clock last night. We should talk about that game as Casey, of course, falls to 0-3 in the Big 12, 7-8 and overall, under 500 with a 64-50 to loss to Texas. Um, and if I'm being real, you know, as, as lopsided as that score sounds, it, it wasn't really that close. I think at one point in the second half, it was 50-32 to Texas, and it felt like they were heading to a 20-25 point win. I mean, get credit to K-State for playing hard through the finish, particularly not to single out freshmen. Other older players played hard too, but I really thought K-State's freshmen, Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy in particular, late in that game, played very hard when it was, you know, out of reach. And I think that's a good sign for them. Um, but it's a tough game to take any moral victories from, and we really, you know, quite honestly shouldn't. It was a game I thought K-State, uh, like, like all of these, desperately need to win when you're 0-2, going into the big, going, excuse me, in Big 12 play going into that game, only 7-7 seven seven overall. Texas wasn't playing well going into this game either. So, of course, they desperately needed it, but it wasn't a great opponent. And as we talk a little about K-State's own three start in the league, something that's troubling is I don't know how good the three teams they've played are. You know, Oklahoma hasn't appeared to be particularly good. Texas was 0-2 coming into this one. TCU's off to a nice 3-0 start. Um, we'll see how good they really are. I don't know if they've played anybody good. Uh, it's early in the season, so there's a lot still to learn, and perhaps K-State will be still, still be significantly better, you know, than, than, uh, than I think they are right now. But... But they weren't, they weren't great in this one, of course. You know, I'm going to steal some numbers, of course, from, from KSU fan. That's at KSU underscore fan on Twitter. If you're not following him, you know, you absolutely should because he shares all these stats with us, uh, both on the site and on that Twitter. So you can look at that. Uh, a number I love to look at from him is, is offensive rating. Um, it's a number he'll explain, you know, better, better than I will. But you'd like to see a guy above 1.0 probably to have a nice game. K-State only had one player above a 1.0. It was Dejuan Gordon at a 1.23. That's a really solid number for the true freshman. You know, some more traditional stats for Dejuan Gordon. He did finish with nine points. I believe he was four or five from the field. Uh, he only turned it over two times on a night when K-State turned over 18 and 27 minutes. Like I said, five boards, four or five from the field. One of one from three. You know, after the game, Bruce Weber said that he believed Dejuan Gordon is slowly but surely becoming their leader. I thought that was the most telling, probably positive quote you could have heard from, from Coach Weber after a game like this and something you'd want to see. I think my challenge back to maybe to Coach Weber, and we'll see what happens with it. We'll have a media availability today at 1.30. Maybe we'll find out. I'm curious if he's a guy who gets inserted into the starting lineup, you know, if he's somebody he looks you look at as your leader. Um, a big, big issue in this game down there in Austin was was foul trouble for McCall Wayne. I think I tweeted this out, um, and I'll get some of the numbers perhaps a little bit wrong, but K-State was down 14-11, I believe, with 11 minutes left in the first half as a three-point game. When, when Mac picked up his second foul, he sat the rest of the half. That's something you could certainly talk about whether Bruce Weber or not should be sitting him, you know, the rest of the half with two fouls in a, in a must-win game or close to must-win game on the road in Austin, but that's what Bruce Weber does um, for better or worse. It's worked for him in the past. It hasn't worked for him in the past at times, so it's probably not going to change. Um, either way, K-State's down through and Mac goes out. He misses the next 11 minutes. K-State stays in the game. I think they're down five at halftime. He only plays 27 seconds in the second half because, uh, to be honest, Cartier Jada does not block out the shooter, lets the shooter get it off the rebound, and Mack is basically forced to foul him at the rim uh, to prevent an easy lay-in. 
Mack picks up his third foul, goes to the bench um, after only playing 27 minutes. So he only played 27 seconds, pardon me, of an 18-minute on-court stretch. Uh, when he left, K-State was down 14-11. When he came back, it was, they were down 43-27. So went from a three-point deficit to a 16-point deficit with Mawain on the bench. Uh, even though he's not playing very well, the guy is certainly a huge factor on defense and for K-State. And he's struggling big time to avoid foul trouble again. And it's a big reason why K-State is struggling, of course, too. Uh, Xavier Sneed plays his behind off every game and did the same in Austin, took a really bad fall, went into the game injured. But let's be honest, he really struggled in this game. Probably one of the worst offensive games of his career. Uh, one of eight from the floor, one of five from three. He did not turn it over in 27 minutes, um, but he also only added two rebounds. If we're being honest, a really, really rough game for him. Cartier Jada had some nice numbers on the stat sheet and did some good things. I don't want to take everything away from him. K-State's leading score with 14 points. 6 to 16 from the field, four boards, five assists, just one turnover in 37 minutes. So it did a lot of nice things. But there's a couple of plays from Cardi, you know, in a game like this to just drive you crazy. You know, he he created the foul that sent McCall Mowain to the bench and really got K-State run out of that game. Uh, you know, later on, as K-State's trying to stay in this in this game, he throws the ball to David Sloan with three seconds left on the shot clock to his back left shoulder near half court, making Sloan try to get to the, you know, the three-point line and force a shot over a seven-foot defender at the shot clock. So there's just little things that don't soap up the stat, the stat sheet that are really, you know, upsetting K-State's coaches, upsetting K-State, and causing K-State, you know, to lose. Cartier Jada did not lose K-State this game. That is not the point I'm trying to make. Um, you'd have to point your finger at, you know, McCall Wayne, Xavier Sneed. If you want to start picking out individuals probably before him in this game, uh, Levi Stockard for sure. That's not the point. But with Cardi, it is it is frustrating because there's some things he's doing that aren't that's not showing up to where maybe the you know the layman or the common the common fan, if that's the term I guess I want to use, sees it if they're just looking at the stats and not watching the game or not getting a chance to see the game. But as you see it, it's it's things that are really causing K State troubles. But that is singling him out a little bit. Uh, he continues to play hard. He continues to be the first player out to warm up every game. He was the first man out in Austin. You know, I don't think I think the team didn't get there until about three o'clock. We went over to the Irwin Center from where we were staying. It was about five twenty. We got in the we got in there. Cardi Ajada walked out maybe at the same time we did into the arena. So they basically got there. Cardi went out and started working. So as I criticize him and talk about it, this kid is trying. He's working. Um, he's not he's not putting in uh, a lack of time or a lack of effort. Um, he, he just like all of K State's players have to play significantly better. You know, to get off this slide. A uh, brief look around at what we're talking about today on the site. Grant Flanders put up his report card from the game. It is pretty rough, but I think he did a very good, very honest job with it. Um, that's something you can check out. We have a lot of coverage from the game in Austin. We were fortunate to be down there. Full uh, post-game press conference from Bruce Weber, photos, um, stats from fan analysis from Nelson, all my thoughts. Derek Young wrote a, wrote a really cool feature called And One. We're starting And One, meaning just thoughts from somebody else on our staff, somebody new. He wrote a nice little column that's on the message board about it. If you want to check that out, I thought it was pretty cool. Derek also has continued his, I guess, season preview series for class of 2021, or class of 2020. One, that's correct. Uh, recruiting is at wide receiver today. The focus was on really Jalen Noel out of the Kansas City area. He's on the front page. That's probably the guy we're looking at most there, but there's more targets in there to talk about and look at. You'll continue to see those almost daily on the site um, from Derek along with his recruiting notebooks and just general, re general recruiting coverage. You will probably hear news of a K-State transfer slash commitment today on the site. We've got that all ready to go. Um, I'm just not going to say the name, even though you probably know who it is if you paid any attention. That could be up as soon as I get this this podcast up. Um, also, something I've hit it on the board. I won't say more about it here on this you know kind of free form, but um, go click on a thread that says Monday stuff, and it talks a little bit of K-State scheduling uh, news for football, perhaps you could hear about soon, too. So I think that's going to let me wrap it up. Again, it's a short podcast. These will be around you know seven to ten minutes. Nothing too lengthy. At some point, I might inter might integrate some question and answer in here, ask for questions on the board, uh, get some interaction. That'll be a lot better, I think, because you guys are more fun to listen to than me. Like I said, I'll get Flando and DY in this too. I do want to thank People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. I also want to mention Tallgrass Tap House. We'll be there every Thursday night through college basketball season to have our podcast. Last week, we had John Kurtz, Mason both. KSU underscore fan Chris Nelson joined us along with Flando's parents. It was a really good time. So if you ever to come out to one of those things, like we're not afraid to put people on the microphone. It's just to have fun and, and people love to hear people talk um, and share opinions because sometimes they're better thoughts than ours. But I will wrap this one up. This was the debut edition of KSO Today on January 13th, 2020. I'll be back tomorrow, January 14th, 2020 to preview K-State's game with Texas Tech. That will be happening Tuesday night. Appreciate your time and please tell your friends.